Hey everyone, Ryan from e Bike Escape, and today we're checking out the single speed belt drive bike from KBO, the Hurricane. So let's get into the review. Before we get into the review, of course, I will have a link to the KBO Hurricane in the description below. But if you want to support what I'm doing here at eBike Escape, perhaps you're shopping for some accessories, check out my electric bike accessories list. I will also have a link to my electric bike deals page, as well as our top eBike brands page. If you make a purchase through any of those pages, it supports us and we appreciate it. With that, let's get to the walk around. Okay, let's take a closer look at the KBO Hurricane. First, you'll note that the rear wheel is actually wedged between two logs, but I do believe that the models shipping out now do include a rear kickstand. So just a note there, there is a mounting point there. So it's nice that they include a kickstand because you'll likely want it, most people do. All right, with that, let's get started here in the front. The first thing to note is these are road tires. So these are made by a company called Innova, not a brand that I am currently familiar with or have seen on any other electric bikes. Of course, many electric bikes have wider tires, but these are 700 by 32 C. And since this is a stealthy e-bike, I do like that with the black colored frame, they went with black spokes, black rim, looks really sharp. And then on the front, we have 160 millimeter disc rotors. Now the calipers that they went with are actually unbranded, but I had to make some slight adjustments out of the box and I was able to tighten them down relatively easily. So definitely still some decent brakes as far as I'm concerned through my test riding. And one thing to note also with this bike is it does come with Presta valves instead of Schrader, although they did in the box include a Schrader to Presta converter. But in my experience, it is nicer to have a bike pump that can pump specifically these Presta valves. All right, and then the front wheel is a quick release, so you can pop this tire off if you have a smaller vehicle. Since this bike is really light, it will be able to fit in some smaller vehicles, so that's a bonus. You don't have to buy a giant hitch-mounted bike rack if you don't want to. And the cables are nicely routed. They all come down here into one bundle. And then obviously the brake cable comes down, but then all of the other cables go to the down tube. So really clean, really stealthy. Obviously this battery is integrated. 36 volt, 9.6 amp hour using Panasonic cells. And the charge port for this bike is located right here. Has a little rubber cover to protect from any rain. The bike did come with fenders. I'm not sure if they're still shipping fenders with these bikes, but something to note that they do have mounting points for fenders if you choose to use them. All right, let's move on to the cockpit. Pretty simple up here, obviously no throttle. That wouldn't really make sense on a bike like this because you just burn through the battery too much. But you do get this nice LCD screen. I can try to show it to you in the light here. So hold the left button that has an M to turn it on. And then you have three power assists. So one, two, three, and off. And then pressing the M button will toggle the front light on and off. And there is an indicator for that, as you can see. And I do like that KBO included an integrated light, especially at a bike this price point. I think it's actually a fairly decent light, what I always say is if you are planning to ride at night, I would always recommend a high lumen external light mounted to your handlebars, but these are really good for visibility, perhaps near dusk and especially at nighttime as well. So a nice addition, safety factor to have with the bike. And as far as brake levers, these are unbranded, but they do have the grips, which adds some comfort and they do include motor cutoffs as well. So that's a nice safety feature. As soon as you hit this brake, it's going to kill any power to the motor. 
Onto the grips, these are actually locking grips, which is worth noting because it's not something you typically see on budget e-bikes, and I certainly do prefer them, so awesome that KBO included these nice locking grips. On the right side, they do include this bell, and this is the cell phone mount that I use on most of my electric bikes. You can check out this one in our e-bike accessories list. I did want to highlight that KBO has used spacers here, so it raises up the handlebars quite a bit and gives you a little bit more of an upright riding position than you would otherwise have without the spacers. And you'll be able to get a better idea of riding position later in this video when I show some of my 360 footage that I took. As far as branding goes, KBO just has their logo listed here on each side. And KBO also includes this metal bottle cage. Bottle cage mounts here which is really nice. And they do include these Welgo pedals. Now, a lot of electric bikes come with Welgo pedals quite similar to this, but these are a little bit different shape. I actually think they fit the bike quite good. They look kind of cool and they match, obviously, the black theme that they have going on. And we have the rear brakes here. And what I do like is because this 350 watt peak motor is quite small, you're actually able to get an Allen wrench here to adjust the brakes, adjust that inner pad, to make sure that the brakes are fitting properly. All right, now let's move on to the other side. This is one of my favorite parts of this bike, the belt drive, no maintenance, no mess. Really have been enjoying testing out some belt drive electric bikes. If you're looking at a single speed, it's something worth considering, super smooth. And I'll talk a little bit more about the gearing when I do my first person riding footage. The motor power connects here and then runs along to that 350 watt peak motor. Really small, again, this is a super stealthy electric bike. Most people aren't even going to be able to realize that it is electric. And here's just a look at the cables that come down to the down tube and then go to the motor, the brakes, and the pedal assist sensor. Moving on to the seat post and seat, I actually just moved the Promax seat post up to its minimum insertion point. So this is the highest you'd be able to get the seat, at least on the stock seat post. And then they are using the Sella Royale Royal Gel seat. And as far as seats go for road bikes, I actually find that this is pretty comfortable. You can see it has a little bit of a cushion. Okay, that completes the walk around. Let's get to some first person riding footage. I'll share with you the top speed. I'll do my hill climb test and then we'll do some third person riding footage and I'll give you my final thoughts on the KBO Hurricane. Let's do it. All right, let's get to the first person riding footage. So first I'm going to do a top speed test in the highest pedal assist level and then I'll go through the various pedal assist levels and we'll take it up the large hill that I take all the bikes that I review up. All right, let's get started. The speed is on my cell phone. Hopefully you can read it even with the sun today, but I will call it out as well on the video. All right, here we go. Pedal assist three. Here we go. So five, eight, 12. And it is a bit windy today, 18, 19. And I'm pushing pretty hard here, 22. And I think that's going to be it. So max speed, 21 or 22 miles per hour, working pretty hard. All right, now let's go to pedal assist one. So I actually have to cycle through this. So down to zero and one. So I'm gonna pedal just nice and easy here. So you can get an idea of speed. So right around 10, 11 miles per hour. Let's go in pedal assist two. 13, 14. Legs are definitely spinning a little bit more can feel the motor helping me a lot more. Even hitting 16, 17. And then pedal assist three. Eighteen. And then I kind of really have to work 
to get up to that max speed. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of the pedal assist levels. Now let's go into turning pedal assist off. And this bike is definitely capable of pedaling without the motor because it is so light. But you will not want to take it up any kind of hill without the help of the motor. So I'm pedaling nice and easy, 11, 12 miles per hour, definitely doable. Let's actually see how fast I can get up just pedaling by myself here. 15, 18, 20, not bad. And one thing to note just with the motor, because it is only a 250 watt sustained, 350 watt peak motor, it kicks in nice and easy, real smooth, no jerkiness, feels really nice. Just giving you a little bit extra speed with the various pedal assist levels. Okay, now we're gonna take this up the giant hill and we'll see what this thing is capable of doing on a large hill. Let's do it. Okay, here we are at the hill. I will put everything on the screen, information about this hill. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. And I apologize if you can't see the road in front of me. It's a little bit tricky sometimes to make sure it's in view, especially when I'm pedaling harder. And also on this bike, I am hunched over a little bit more. So pedal assist three, and uh, I'm gonna get some speed. And I know the hill doesn't look nearly as big on the GoPro, so. I'll be curious if I can make it up. Going about 20 miles per hour now. Motor's helping me a fair bit. Pedal spinning. And pretty shortly I'll have to stand. There we go, standing up. And really what a lot of this is, is can I keep the single speed drivetrain spinning to keep the pedal assist engaged? Because I am putting in a fair bit of effort. Went about 12. Just about to the top here. So obviously that took some effort on my part, but was still able to make it up with the 250 watt sustained, 350 watt peak motor. Now just keep in mind, this bike is really set up for city riding. I wouldn't recommend buying this bike if you're gonna be taking up hills like this quite frequently, but it's nice to know that you can. So with that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll share my final thoughts on the KBO Hurricane.
It's stealthy and it's affordable at $1,099. The KBO Hurricane is exactly what I thought it was going to be, and that's a good thing. I recently reviewed the KBO Breeze and was impressed with that bike's value as well. KBO, while still a new company, has done a good job with their first two models focusing on value-priced electric bikes, and I'm excited to see what more they have in store. The sustained 250 watt motor that peaks at 350 watts gives you just enough boost to zip around town on this ultra light electric bike. You'll just arrive at your destination faster or less tired rider's choice. After riding so many single speed electric bikes recently, I have to say I really enjoyed the simplicity, especially with the belt driven models like the KBO Hurricane. Pretty much the only thing you'll need to worry about is adjusting the brakes over time and eventually replacing the brake pads as well. Though if this was my everyday e-bike, I'd definitely look into purchasing puncture resistant road tires like gator skins. It's just nice to know that with the belt drive and the lack of a derailleur that your bike is ready to go whenever you are. KBO recommends the Hurricane for riders 5'6 to 6'6, though my wife who is 5'5 was able to hop on the bike and have some fun with no issues. I'm 6 feet tall for reference and it fits me well. I also like that KBO doesn't try to nickel and dime you on accessories. You'll receive a kickstand, water bottle holder, an adequate multi-tool, and even fenders if you choose to install them. Stated range is between 18 and 53 miles, which is admittedly a pretty large range. I did a 15 mile ride which consisted of various levels of pedal assist and ended up at just over half a battery. Of course you can extend your range by using pedal assist level 1 or no assist at all. Try doing that with other e-bikes in the 60 to 70 pound range. Just know that you'll absolutely need the motor for any kind of hill. The 36 volt 9.6 amp hour or 345 watt hour battery is about half the capacity of a 48 volt 14 amp hour battery which is a pretty standard size on e-bikes these days. The 345 watt hours is actually pretty decent since the Hurricane doesn't even look like an e-bike. Remember that the battery is integrated into the frame which means bringing the bike to an outlet rather than just bringing the battery in order to charge it up. Not only does the price make this bike accessible at $1,099, but you don't need an actual e-bike rated rack for their saving cost. Since it's so light, you can easily throw it in the back of your vehicle as well. Plus the Hurricane can easily be transported into an upstairs condo, apartment, or wherever you happen to live. We weighed the bike on our scale at about 38 pounds. My only gripe with the Hurricane is selecting the pedal assist. Since there is only one selector button instead of two, you need to cycle through them. This makes it impossible to go from, for instance, pedal assist three down to two. Instead, you are forced to click through zero, one, and then get to level two pedal assist. This is a small issue and something many riders probably wouldn't even pay much attention to, but I thought it was worth Worth mentioning. And as far as the number of pedal assist levels, at first I thought three levels wouldn't be enough, but with such a low wattage motor, it actually didn't bother me. Speaking of the motor, this thing is amazingly quiet, further adding to the stealth factor. So if you're looking at single speed electric bikes or even $1,000-ish e-bikes, then the KBO Hurricane is worth a closer look. Links are in the description and we greatly appreciate your support. If you're new here, please consider subscribing as it has a direct impact on making reviews like this possible. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.